My name is Dr. Bravi. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer at EHA Clinics. EHA Clinics is a high-quality private primary healthcare organization that is based in Nigeria. As Chief Innovation Officer, I'm in charge of directing research, diagnostics, and digital health at EHA Clinics. My name is Aisha Amir Saidu, and I am a biomedical engineer at EHA Clinics. My general research interests are to address knowledge gaps with validated findings and discover new solutions to overcome unresolved barriers. The main question that we investigated in this study was to look at the accuracy of different infrared thermometers in comparison with a standard oral digital thermometer and the ability of these thermometers to diagnose fever in an outpatient clinic setting in Nigeria. We became interested in this question a few years ago when one of my co-authors, Aisha, and I were getting ready to open one of our new clinics in Nigeria. And we wanted to find out, you know, what is the best way to diagnose fever and measure temperature in one of our new clinics? Because we had several options in front of us. Um, as you probably know, temperature is a vital sign and it is an indicator of health. Um, you probably have experience having your temperature taken when you went to the doctor's office. So among the different options we had in choosing a thermometer, we decided to do a scientific study to compare these different thermometers and come up with the best option for our clinic. In April 2019, we plan to recruit um, about 200 participants. So we had 100 males and 100 females from a general hospital in Kanu, Nigeria. The Ministry of Health granted us um, the ethics approval and the participants also provided us informed consent. We had an inclusion and exclusion criteria. The study lasted about four days and with the same routine of activities. So we compared four thermometers with different modes of temperature sensing. We had the oral thermometer, we had the tympanic thermometer, we had the temporal artery and the contactless thermometer. The team leader, which was me, recorded the ambient temperature at the start of the study and every 30 minutes thereafter. If the patient was wearing a head cap or head covering, they were asked to remove for the duration of the temperature me measurements. The nurse then waited five minutes before wiping the patient's forehead with a disposable towel. And the nurse then took the temperature readings per device. Only one measurement was taken at a time. Within five minutes to all the four methods of temperature measurements were performed on the same participants. So to avoid bias, the temperature sequence followed which was the oral, the tympanic, temporal artery, and then the contact lens. This was now cycled with each patient. Any patient with a temperature higher than 38 degrees Celsius was referred to a duty nurse. After each use, each thermometer was cleaned with a disinfectant alcohol wipe. So what we found from our study uh, was that a specific type of thermometer called a temporal artery thermometer, this is a kind of thermometer that you scan across your forehead, that was the most accurate in our study. We also found that another type of infrared thermometer called a contactless thermometer, so this is something that you just point at your forehead without touching, that was the least accurate. One of the most surprising things that we found in our study was that a tympanic thermometer, this is the kind you just put in your ear, um, you know, especially popular among children, was just as good as the temporal artery thermometer, uh, but this tympanic thermometer costs about 10 times less than a temporal artery thermometer. Of course, this is all um, applicable to only specific makes and models, and these are just the findings from our study. Of course, these can change with the setting, the make, the model of the thermometer. Based on our findings, the forehead contactless thermometers we looked at had low sensitivity to detect fever. And we all know that this is the thermometer which, you know, being used now. And then we had key factors to consider exactly. So when purchasing a thermometer, you need to include the accuracy, the patient comfort, um, efficiency and administrative costings. So in light of the limited resources that we have around us and the operating budgets in a low income area, our study recommends that it will be beneficial for decision makers to carefully assess the accuracy of a device rather than jumping into conclusions based on cost savings. 
key stakeholders, biomedical engineers, policymakers, hospital administrators, they should really carefully consider their choices before making medical device decisions. The most expensive devices may not be the best, but neither could be the cheapest ones. The failure to diagnose fever in febrile patients can result in negative outcomes, like worsening disease severity, spreading the infection to others, higher cost of subsequent treatment, and possibly sometimes death. As previously stated, the proper mode of thermometry is critical to diagnosing fevers and overall health management. We are expanding this line of research. Uh, currently, we are doing a comparative evaluation of a point of care diagnostic device to detect anemia, which is low blood count, uh, and comparing this with a standard lab method. Uh, we are getting ready to do a study of smart watches and their ability to measure blood pressure and ECG. And the most amazing thing is that we are doing this in Nigeria, uh, the most populous country in Africa with a population of 220 million people and an outsized burden of disease. So Nigeria can benefit from developing this capacity to evaluate medical devices, not only for the national market, but for the African market. And that is very exciting. I would be very happy if decision makers started looking at the quality of medical devices in addition to the price. Not all devices are the same and decision makers should be building national capacity to validate devices for their patient populations.